Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah al-ladhi al-azim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina abil qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad. وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك رحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Before we start I want to offer my condolences to Imam of our time, to our Maraja, and to all of you for the demise of Ayatollah Misbah Yazdi, Rahmatullah Alay. And it is uh, interesting for me that uh, he passed away on Friday because he was very much a uh, dedicated to Imam Mahdi Sharif and I think maybe this is not just a kind of accident or you know, lucky coincidence maybe there is a reason for that uh, I have uh, uh, lots of memories from him over years and I hope inshallah I can uh, think about them and organize them and maybe we can have you know some uh, talk about this great man and for sure he has great rights upon our generation and next generation those who come after us because we have benefited a lot from his uh, scholarship whether it be his own teaching, whether it be his students, whether it be his books. And Allah gave him the blessing of being able to train very good students and also very useful books are produced by him. So inshallah, I hope we can you know, have some session to review some aspects of his life and his legacy and what lessons we can take. May Allah inshallah resurrect him with Muhammad and all Muhammad on all our godly scholars and his uh, teachers like Imam Khomeini, Ayatollah Bahjat, Allama Tabatabai who were very dear to him. We continue our uh, study of Jam al Sadat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. As you remember, we were talking about the way we can have presence of heart and part of it was by, deeping thinkly, uh, by thinking deeply about those things that can divide our attention can make us busy about other things we said there are external factors there are internal factors external factors are easier to deal with something related to a space to the time there's crowd there is noise there are things in front of you that can uh, draw your attention to themselves these are easier to deal with and s fix them but there are things inside that can preoccupy us and some of these things are uh, in a more underlying layer some are su more superficial layer so we talked about these things and we reached here on the page 270 of volume 3 he says, وَعَلَى الْجُمْلَةِ فَهِمَّةُ الدُّنْيَا وَهِمَّةُ الْآخِرَةِ فِي الْقَالْبِ 
مثل الماء الذي يصب في قدح فيه خل to have him concern for dunya and concern for akhirah in the same heart is not possible he says it's like you have a suppose cup if there is vinegar khal in this and then you want to put also water at the same time that it is filled with vinegar you want to fill it with water it doesn't make sense it's not possible Certainly, as you put water inside, vinegar goes out. How many cc's, how many liters of water are you going to put inside? The same amount will go away from vinegar. They cannot be together. So, although our heart is not a physical container, so it's not exactly like putting, you know, two liquids in the same container, because our heart is not physical, but there are similarities. That what fills your heart would leave no chance for another thing to come. ما جعل الله للرجل من قلبين في جوفه. Allah has not given us two hearts. We have one heart, and if you dedicate it to one thing, then other things would not be able to. So if it is dedicated to dunya, then akhirah cannot be remembered and be uh, honored in that heart. Then he says, ثم جميع ما ذكره أنما هو في الخواطر المتعلقة بالأمور المهمة من الدنيا. All the things that we have said are the things that are uh, thoughts that are related to those things that matter to us about dunya. مهمة, although we say مهمة for mission in Arabic or in Farsi we say for something which is important but all come from ham muhim is ma yuhimuka aham ma yuhimu what creates concern in you what is uh, making you busy and preoccupied and you know matters to you a lot that is muhim حتى إذا خرجت هذه الأمور من القلب خرجت منه هذه الخواطر أيضا If the roots of these thoughts which are attachment to dunya If the roots are disappearing These thoughts which are the fruits of them also will disappear وقد تكون الخواطر من مجرد الوساوس الباطنة والخيالات الفاسدة من دون تعلقها بشغل وعمل دنيوي يكون لها. But there are also cases that these thoughts are not necessarily because you have developed hope of dunya, or at least it's not something that you can quickly notice. These wasawas, these are thoughts, unwanted thoughts, temptations that come. Even min dun ta'alluqha bishuglin wa amali, amalin dunyawi. Even without this person being uh, busy and the heart of this person be busy with something with a worldly engagement that can bring these thoughts. And he has no free will. He has not wanted, he had no choice of having these thoughts. مِن دُونِ اخْتِيَارَ الْعَبْدِ فِي خُطُورَهَا وَعَدَمِ خُطُورَهَا So, we human beings sometimes uh, put some ideas, some ideals in ourselves that bring thoughts, 
sometimes we are like somehow victims sometimes or at least in one level we are victims. maybe in a more underlying level we have done something wrong but in one level we look you know it's a nice person he's a god-fearing person he is a moral person he's a virtuous person but still some thoughts come and it's very complicated to realize where these thoughts originate from are they sometimes put in us by shaitan because shaitan can communicate at least can bring thoughts and namadautuku at least shaitan can call shaitan can do waswas are there also people who can do this sometimes we human beings also interact not only physically maybe even when we are silent we can interact on each other if someone is a you know for example person who is full of stress and sits in the same room even without talking to me <laughs> and without any, seeing anything but if in his heart there are lots of you know tensions i may get affected so there are different things and sometimes maybe i have also some problems myself and i have not trained at least my mind to be focused so there are different things while i'm rufi ha asab here is more difficult because this is not something that you can say okay be in a good place and good time etc or get rid of hubbu dunya only of course وَإِنْ كَانَ لِقَلْعِ حُبِّ الدُّنْيَا وَشَهَوَاتِهَا عَنِ الْقَلْبِ مَدْخَلِيَّةٌ عَظِيمَةٌ فِي زَوَالْهَا إِذَنْ Of course, if we manage to get rid of حُبُّ الدُّنْيَا, it would help a lot. It bears on this issue a lot. إِذْ مَادَّتُ هَذِهِ الْوَسَاوِسِ إِذَنْ إِمَّا حُبُّ الْمَالِ because in the end the root the source of even this kind of things is dunya. if someone manages to get rid of dunya, even from jah, because jah is more difficult than hubbul mal or hubbul other shahawat Hadith says Akhiru or at least it's famous. Uh, we have to maybe look into the Sanad, but uh, it's very famous and it says Akhiru ma yakhruju min qulub as siddiqin hubbul jah. The very last thing that departs the hearts of the most truthful people is hubbul jah means this is the most difficult one hubbul jah it shows how much social we are how much opinion of others matter to us sometimes people are happy to live with hunger with thirst you know without money without even i don't know other kinds of pleasure of dunya but still, how people think about them, them whether people you know, love them, whether they respect them, whether people are happy to obey them, whether they have you know, political power or not, still these things matter to them. Hopeful Jah. Jah means your social position, the way that others look at you and revere you and what degree in the social hierarchy you occupy this is hubbul jah even for a student a talab they can be hubbul jah what my classmates think about me what my teacher thinks about me and when you become a great alim hubbul jah becomes more important because then you have many many people that uh, would look at you as you know they're a scholar as I don't know their role model that leader you know uh, and sometimes if you are not careful 
instead of trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you try to please them and meet their expectations and it's very difficult for an alim instead of guiding people would be guided by them and saying things that are pleasing them it's not easy uh, therefore either they have to compromise about their duties or they are always in difficult time and situation with followers and lovers and students who are not wise how to keep them on the right path without them being offended without them being I don't know pushed away etc and also how you deal with other scholars how much respect you have for them how much respect you have for their work for their lovers etc so hubbul jah is not only for politicians or for businessmen or etc or for the writers or journalists hubbul jah is for everyone even uh, people who have no job and they work at home or you know they are housewives they can still have hubbul jah and they may be free from hubbul jah so these are uh, the roots the sources of these wasafs waqad taqaddama tafsil al qawl fiha wa fi tariq ilajihim ilajaha fi bahs al wasafs the late naraqi in the first volume we are at the very end of the book we are towards the end of the book last part of the third volume but in the beginning in first volume he has a detailed discussion about these wasawas these thoughts that come uh, to our mind without us wanting them and maybe inshallah at some point we discuss that part of the book at least because my plan was to start with this but then little by little study some different parts of the book so alhamdulillah this chapter finished now faslun asrar salat fi tahsil kull wah kull wahid min shurut salat wa af'alha wa arkanha asrar wa tanbihat so this chapter is about asrar salat about some of the secrets of salat means some of the things beyond legal aspect that we have to think about them and he says for bringing any condition or action or pillars of salat there are asrarun wa tanbihatun there are secrets and there are things that we have to notice fayan baghi lil mu'min al murid lil akhirah allah yaghfur anha a believer who is seeking the hereafter is expected not to be heedless about these secrets we start with azan then we talk about for example waqt about timing then we talk about tahara tahara of the place tahara of body tahara of the clothes etc amal azan although azan is before salat but even in adhan we have to be mindful and actually adhan is to prepare ourselves so that when salat is going to start we are already in a very good position in a very high position about presence of heart so what should be our understanding our feeling when adhan starts the call for prayer starts فَإِذَا سَمِعْتَ نِدَاءَ الْمُعَذَّنِ When you hear the call of Mu'azzin, the one who calls for prayer, فَأَخْطِرْ فِي قَلْبِكَ حَوْلَ النِّدَاءِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Immediately think of the fear of great call which is going to be made on the day of judgment when we are all called to 
to be assembled. When we are all called to stand before our leaders. This call in Adhan should remind us of that call on the Day of Judgment. And we should be prepared for that. وَتَشَمَّرْ بِبَاطِنِكَ وَظَاهِرِكَ لِلْإِجَابَةِ وَالْمُسَارَةِ With your body, which is your zahir, your external outward aspect, and with your soul and spirit, which is internal, tashammar. Tashammar means, you know, like for example, when you want to do something, sometimes you fold and tie your sleeves. Tashammara. So here means get ready and be prepared for the work. So tashammar bi batinika wa zahirika lil ijabati wal busara. For responding and for being fast also. When we are called for salat, we should not delay, we should be fast. Unless there is a really uh, challenging situation. فَإِنَّ الْمُسَارِعِينَ إِلَىٰ هَذَا النِّدَىٰ هُمُ الَّذِينَ يُنَادَوْنَ بِالْلُطْفِ يَوْمَ الْعَرْضِ الْأَكْبَرِ This great alim, this great faqih, mujtahid, philosopher, he says, those who respond quickly in dunya to the call for prayer, I repeat, those who respond quickly in dunya to the call for prayer, on the day of judgment, they will be called with kindness, with courtesy. Not in the way that they would be, you know, harassed or, you know, frightened or rushed. No, gently they will be called. Respectfully they will be called. إِنَّ الْمُسَارِعِينَ إِلَىٰ هَذَا النِّدَاءِ هُمُ الَّذِينَ يُنَادَوْنَ بِالْلُطْفِ يَوْمَ الْعَرْضِ الْأَكْبَرِ أرض الأكبر means great presentation when we are all asked on the day, uh, day of judgment to be assembled and to present if, and you want to be called with lutf with favor then respond to muadzin to the call for prayer quickly فَإِنْ وَجَدْتَهُ مَمْلُوءًا بِالْفَرَحِ وَالْإِسْتِبْشَارِ مَشْهُونًا بِالرَّغْبَةِ إِلَى الْإِبْتِدَاءِ فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ يَأْتِيكَ النِّدَاءُ بِالْبُشْرَةِ وَالْفَوْزِ يَوْمَ الْقَضَاءِ When you hear the call for salat, okay, present this to your heart. Suppose now you are hearing call for salat. If you find your heart is filled with farah wal istibshar, with joy, istibshar means to receive bashara. So you take it as a bashara that it's the time for salat, and your heart is filled with yearning for initiating salat, like a person who is hungry and the food is prepared and he is eager to quickly start eating. If this is your condition with respect to Salat, so be aware that on the Day of Judgment also you would receive the call Bil Bushra, Wal Fawz, as a Bishara, as a good news, and as a way of success, Yawm Al Qadha, on the Day of Judgment. وَلِذَلِكَ قَالَ سَيِّدُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ this is why the Prophet used to say to Bilal al-Habashi, Arihna ya Bilal. When the time of Salat was there, Rasulullah was saying, Comfort us, O Bilal. What does it mean? Ay arihna biha wa bin nida ilayha. Arihna bil salat. Arihna bin nida ila salah. Comfort us with Salat, comfort us with calling for Salat. إِذْ كَانَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِهِ فِيهَا Because قُرَّةُ عَيْنِ for the Prophet, the, what was giving his eyes joy 
والصلات جعلت قرة عيني في الصلاة then this is about the general attitude but then there are sentences that we say in during Adhan or we hear when someone is saying Adhan so those sentences are also very important واعتبر بفصول الأذان وكلماته then take ibrah take lesson from those different items different things which are mentioned different phrases which are mentioned during Adhan if you reflect on them you'll realize that first we say Allahu Akbar Billah, how it starts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then at the end we say la ilaha illallah so Allah is the first word and Allah again is the last word iftatahat billah wa khtatamat billah it starts with, uh, with the name of Allah Allah Allahu Akbar and ends with Allah la ilaha illallah what can I learn from this wa'tabir bithalika anna Allah jalla jalaluhu huwa al-awwal wa al-akhir wa al-zahir wa al-batin from this take this lesson that as Quran says Allah is the first and the last Allah is the Zahir, the one which is outward, and the one which is inward, Batin. وَوَطِّنْ قَلْبَكَ بِتَعْظِيمِهِ Tawtin. Tawtin on nafs means to make your nafs ready. As Imam Hussain alayhi salam said, مَنْ كَانَ بَاضِلًا فِينَا مُحْجَتَهِ وَمُوَطِّنًا عَلَى لِقَاءِ اللَّهِ نَفْسَهِ فَلْيَرْحَلْ مَعَنَا مُوَطِّنًا عَلَى لِقَاءِ اللَّهِ نَفْسًا is whoever is prepared has worked on himself and has prepared his nafs to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so وَطِّنْ قَلْبَكَ بِتَعْظِيمِهِ إِنْدَ السَّمَاعِ التَّكْبِيرَ so prepare your heart to respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as soon as he hears the takbir Allahu Akbar وَاسْتَحْقِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا فِيهَا and have a very low view of dunya استحقر find dunya low and mean so that when you say Allahu Akbar you are not a liar if I say Allahu Akbar but I think dunya is more important or equally important then it becomes a lie وَاسْتَحْقَرَ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا فِيهَا لِأَلَّا تَكُونَ كَاذِبًا فِي تَكْبِيرِكَ so that you are not a liar in your takbir وَانْفِ أَنْ خَاطِرِكَ كُلَّ مَعْبُودٍ سِوَاهِ بِالسَّمَاءِ التَّحْلِيلِ as soon as you hear La ilaha illallah not only idols should be removed كل معبود سواه should go away from your خاطر from your memory so it's not evacuating the place of worship for example a temple from a statues it's also in mind and heart we should not worship and serve anything and anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in Adhan we have a remembrance of messenger of Allah and we bear witness that he is a messenger of Allah bring and call the Prophet means bring him to the uh, middle of your Adhan and be very polite in front of the Prophet suppose the Prophet is here وَاشْحَدْ لَهُ بِالْرَسَالَةِ مُخْلِصًا with sincerity bear witness that he is the messenger صلى الله عليه وآله وحرك نفسك and move yourself وسع بقلبك وقالبك عند الدعاء إلى الصلاة and with your heart and with your قالب قالب is what 
you know it's like a cast like your body here with your heart and body try to move towards Allah in that dua ila salah when it is called for salat when it is called for what leads to falah success hayya ala salah or ma huwa khayrul a'mal wa afdaluha when we say hayya ala khayrul amal these are all the same as salat ma yujibul falah and what is khayrul amal all are salat the same وَجَدِّدْ أَحْدَكَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ After that, renew your allegiance with again saying takbir وَتَعْظِيمُ of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَاخْتِمْهُ بِذَلِكَ كَمَّ افْتَتَحْتَ بِهِ And then end with that as you started with that وَجْعَلْ مَبْدَعَكَ مِنْهُ وَعَوْدُكَ إِلَيْهِ وَقِوَامُكَ بِهِ your beginning comes from Allah and your return and end also is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From Allah you start and you go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاعْتِمَادُكَ عَلَىٰ حَوْلِهِ وَقُوَّتِهِ You rely on the power of Allah and His ability to change. فَإِنَّهُ لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ الْعَلِيِّ الْعَظِيمِ Because there is no possibility of change and no power except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is about Adhan. The next thing is about Waqt. Waqt is also another thing that we have to be always mindful of. It's a shart, it's a condition for salat. I cannot say my salat before it's permissible and permitted time or after. Faslun al waqt. So the next chapter is about timing. Ida dakhal al waqt. When time comes, istahadir. Bring to your mind, bring to your attention. أَنَّهُ مِيْقَاتٌ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَكَ This is an appointment. For example, now, Salat after Fajr, say is 6.37, for example, I am in here. Something like that. This is not given by a scholar or by a masjid or, I don't know, by people who produce the timetable. This is maw'id. This is appointment that Allah has made for you. Allah has made this miqat, this appointment for you. لَتَقُومَ فِيهِ بِخِدْمَتِهِ وَتَتَأَمَّلَ لِلْمُثُولَ فِي حَضْرَتِهِ وَالْفَوْزِ بِطَاعَتِهِ Allah says, this is the time that you can come. You can come anytime, but this is guaranteed time. Otherwise, day and night, you can always go to Allah. But this is guaranteed time that especially given to you. And when you go to appointment with Allah, how do you go there? With sadness or you know being sleepy or being angry? No. When you go to Allah for appointment, you have to be very joyful and hopeful. You want to reach fawz, which means happiness with obedience to Allah. وَلْيَظْهَرْ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ السُّرُورِ Joy and happiness should appear on your heart. وَعَلَىٰ وَجْهِكَ الْبَحْجَ عِنْدَ دُخُولِ And also when you start Salat, on your face people should see that you are excited, you are happy. لَكَوْنِهِ سَبَبًا لِقُرْبِكَ وَوَسِيلَةً إِلَىٰ فَوْضِكَ Because this Salat is an opportunity for you, it's a means, it's a cause. For nearness to Allah and is a means for salvation. فَاسْتَعِدَّ لَهُ بِالطَّهَارَةِ وَالنِّظَافَةِ وَلُبْسَ الثِّيَابِ الصَّالِحَةِ لِلْمُنَاجَةِ So prepare yourself with tahara, with cleanliness, putting on clothes which are suitable for munajat, for whispering to 
الله سبحانه وتعالى كما تتأحب عند القدوم على ملك ملك على ملك من ملوك الدنيا in the same way that if you want to visit and have appointment with a king how do you prepare yourself here you have to prepare yourself and when you meet the king وَتَلْقَاهُ بِالسَّكِينَةِ وَالْوَقَارِ You don't rush. You don't rush the king. You don't rush the people there. You don't rush yourself. You take your time and try to be there as much as possible. تَلْقَاهُ بِالسَّكِينَةِ وَالْوَقَارِ With serenity and dignity, you meet the king. خَوْفِ وَالرَّجَى You have fear and hope. وَاسْتَحْذِرْ عَذَمَةَ اللَّهِ وَالْجَلَالُهُ Bring to your mind the greatness of Allah and His glory. And remember that Allah is unlimited and infinite, but your size, your degree are limited. وعدم قابليتك للقيام بخدمته وقصورك عن أداء وظائف طاعته. And remember that you are not able to fulfill requirements of being his servant you are not able to bring your takalif your obligations perfectly so with kind of embarrassment we are very much paying attention we are very much trying to be present because it's a very important meeting if it was with a king even in dunya you would be very careful let alone with rabbul alameen and then it goes to Tahara. I think it's enough for us today. And inshallah we will continue next week from page 272. Faslun Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. May Allah bless you.